here we've recorded 40 minutes and <laughs> absolutely none of it is usable. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. And no matter how far away you roam, if you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze, for the holidays you can Welcome back to Horror for the Holidays, a Christmas horror movie podcast. I'm Jay Logsdon. And I'm Jeff Sears. Wait, sorry, wrong song. No, wait, wrong song. Sorry, try again. That's right, guys. Wedding bells in the air. My co-host Jeff just got married. Woo! Round of applause. Yay, me. Oh, so as a, so that's that's exciting news. Yes. <laughs> all right. Tell us all about it, Jeff. Well, we got married. Then, we, right. then we went to Montana. All right. Almost got killed by a mountain lion. Did you uh did you go to did you go to Bozeman and, uh, and see where first contact will be made? No. But I did go to Bozeman and see the Museum of the Rockies. Oh, very cool. But yeah, Glacier National Park was fun. Overall fun trip. I would recommend it. Very cool. But if you're driving in Montana, don't expect a lot of gas stations, so make sure you fill up your tank. All right. Well, I'll keep that in mind for if I ever wind up crossing Montana off the 50 states list that it would be fun to visit all 50 states. Yeah, I think so. Like a specific visit, not just a like drive through. Yeah. No. I mean, if you're doing something, Glacier National Park is pretty cool. And you could knock it out in a couple of days. Very cool. Well, uh, you know what? Here, I called it a Horror for the Holidays, a Christmas horror movie podcast, as I call it every episode. But as I announced in the last episode, this isn't Horror for the Holidays. This is all Horror for the Hollows Day Eve. Uh, a, rolls right off the tongue. A Halloween movie podcast. This is our halloween special yep woo spooky uh for this episode i i think i actually announced it on twitter if you were if you follow us on twitter you got the announcement early oh i don't follow (laughs) not a lot of people do i think we've got 15 followers and one of them's me (laughs) on my other account um for this week's episode we watched uh halloween 1978 the original the good one the good one and so uh let's let's get into it let's set the scene let's deck the halls as one does at Halloween time. Yes, they do. Um, honestly, what what is there to say that hasn't been said? Is there really anything we could say about this movie that like I'm sure countless people before us haven't said? Yes, I'll say something. It was terrible. <laughs> um, I mean, directed by John Carpenter, obviously. Uh, I guess it's something that that it's been mentioned before. It's it's hard to know if it's you know a, a made up story by Bob Clark, uh, but supposedly. Bob Clark was asked by John Carpenter what he would do as a sequel to Black Christmas or a prequel to Black Christmas, mm-hmm. and that's was the inspiration for Halloween. Whether that's true or not, uh, that's yeah, makes a good story. Yeah, um, starring the great uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, who will be in another hol- holiday themed horror movie. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and I know one of Jeff's personal favorites, a little movie called Terror Train. Ah, uh, yes, a masterpiece. <sighs> Fucking love Terror Train. PJ Souls, whatever happened to her, uh, who plays Linda, will is in Uncle Sam Wants You Dead. Uh, maybe we'll get into that for July 4th for the holidays. <laughs> yes, we will. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Donald Pleasance is just fantastic. I mean, he's great. As, as Dr. Lewis, the fucking goat. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, I, I, uh, my, when I was re-watching this, uh, my wife looked it up. And Donald, I, you know, she, she was kind of going through and she's like, you know, okay, Donald Pleasance is in more of these movies than anyone else. And then mm-hmm. it's, then it's Jamie Lee Curtis. And then there, I think there's a nurse, I think the nurse from the opening scene or like, not the opening scene, but like that second scene yeah. is in like four or five of the movies. Yeah. She makes a surprisingly large amount of appearances in the franchise. So I thought that was, that was kind of cool. But yes, I mean, Donald Pleasance, give him credit. He stuck it out through some bad movies. Um, you know, in the in the remake, uh, 
Dr. Loomis is Malcolm McDowell. Mm-hmm. And we will see him again in Silent Night, the Silent Night, Deadly Night remake with the amazing line, you don't bring a flamethrower to a gunfight. <laughs> It's true, you don't. That's that's about all the uh, horror for the holidays, Christmas horror movie content I could find to talk about for this movie. Because, I mean, there's once again, there's nothing to say that hasn't already been said. But we're going to say it anyway. Yeah, so let's get into it. Let's do our synopsis. Uh, we get our opening, you know, we go through the opening credits. Haddonfield, Illinois, 1953, Halloween Eve. Or ha- Halloween, Halloween Eve, what the it's fuck? Hallow's Eve. Uh, POV shot of Michael watching his sister Judith and her boyfriend engaging in some uh, pre-coital activity. Hmm. Uh, Something I noticed was um, the boyfriend puts on the clown mask. Yes. In in my memory, when I've watched this movie in the past, in my memory, Michael's wearing the clown mask the whole time. Yeah. But no, the boyfriend like puts on that clown mask and then they run upstairs and Michael picks it up off the ground. And it's one of those things that like... In my mind, he's wearing it the whole time. Mm, yeah, but because I mean, it seems like it is, but no, he's only wearing it as he walks up the stairs. Yeah, and so it's, it was just kind of one of those things where it's like, it, when when we rewatch it this time, and like when when I when when we rewatch it, when I rewatch it with more of a critical eye, because you know, I watched it, you know, I would watch it this every year at Halloween. Mm. It, when when I rewatch it with a critical eye, there's so many things that I'm like, oh, I'd never caught that before, like. Yeah. John Carpenter really pays attention to detail when he does movies. It's one of the things I love about him. So it turns out a uh, Judith Meyer's boyfriend is like a two pump chump. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> and true. immediately comes back down the stairs yeah. and tells tells Judith that'll call her tomorrow. Michael then uh, grabs a knife out of the kitchen, goes upstairs, and puts puts the clown mask on and murders his sister. It's murder in time. Um, it's Morbin time. <laughs> Goes back downstairs, his parents pull up, they remove the mask, and we get that opening, that shot, like, Michael, what did you do? And mm-hmm. he's holding the bloody knife, and the, the camera pans out. And then you get that amazing, iconic soundtrack. Yep. October 30th, 1978, so 15 years have passed. Um, Smith Grove, Illinois, Dr. Loomis, and the nurse, I, I didn't catch her name, um, are going to take Michael in front of a judge to prepare for transport. Yep. I think they're gonna, uh, Dr. Loomis wants him locked up for life. I mean, Dr. Loomis wants him dead, but barring that, locked up for life is what he'll accept. Uh, there has been a breakout at the mental institution. Michael attacks the nurse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when they're pulling up, the nurse is like, do they let him roam the ground? <laughs> right. Like, uh, no. Nope, they sure I don't. I don't think they do. And, and Michael runs up the back of the car, smashes the glass with his bare hand, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, the nurse gets out and Michael drives away. Uh, Haddonfield again, Halloween again. Which at that point, uh, we both said, how does he know how to drive? <laughs> right. It was, yeah, it was something was it, I, we were sitting there and I think we both kind of said like, who taught Michael how to drive? And it, it had never, I don't think it had ever crossed either of our minds. And then, uh, John Carpenter later on will be like, ah, oh, I anticipated you, you sweaty neck beards. Yeah. Uh, haha, fooled you fuckers. We got this already figured out. Uh, Lori Strode is told by her father to drop off the key to the old Myers place. Why? Well, I wouldn't go to the old Myers place. The old Myers place? I've had to keep thieves and, and looters and even children out of there. <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> we are introduced to Tommy Doyle, who uh, Lori will be babysitting that night. And uh, random aside, has there been a bigger glow up and then glow down in movie history? <laughs> Tommy Doyle grows up to be Paul Rudd. One of the sexiest men alive, and then grows up again to be Anthony Michael Hall and is uh, much less attractive. Ah, uh, what's happening? <laughs> Lori and Tommy drop off the key to my, uh, drop off the key at the house, and Michael watches them through the window. Potentially, the entire movie wouldn't have happened if Lori hadn't gone and put the key at the front door. True, that seems to be when he's like, "Okay, now I'm going to kill her." You know, la- later on, I, you know, they changed they changed the timeline and stuff like that. But yeah. but certainly in this, no, like in this self contained movie, he's like, nope, that's who I'm gonna kill. Yep, I'm gonna follow these people. Uh, we then get the scene that Jeff and I were just talking about. Doctor Loomis yells at Doctor Ward um, at the mental hospital because someone taught Michael how to drive, <laughs> which was great, by the way. There's, yeah, there's a I I don't remember the exact line. I don't think I wrote it down. But and it's, it's like. One, if knowing Michael, how did Michael behave long enough to be taught how to drive without strangling whoever is teaching him? Or maybe he's like, you know, when I break out of here, I'm gonna really need this skill, so I'll just be calm. He, 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 he I, I think it's something like, how did he know? Or you know, he he's been locked up here for years. How did he know how to drive? Well, he was doing it pretty well last night. Yeah. Maybe one of your people taught him. Yep, that's pretty much it. 
But, um, know, he hasn't acquired his uh, Jason-like teleporting powers yet, so he still has to drive places. We get uh, we get in probably one of the first of, of many iconic scenes. There are so many iconic scenes in this movie. The whole movie is iconic. Yep. Uh, Lori is in class, uh, and she stares out the window, and Michael's watching her back through the window. Yep. Um, Which, I know we'll get into the rest of the franchise later, but... I like the way in Halloween 2018 that they kind of parallel a lot of the Lori and Michael shots, mm. like reverse them. Like she's standing outside the granddaughter's school watching her the same way. Uh, Tommy Doyle is being teased by a couple kids about the boogeyman. Yeah. Uh, one of the kids runs into, or they, they cause Tommy to, uh, to drop his pumpkin. That was a really nice looking pumpkin. I know, right? And uh, one Damn of the kids bullies. like almost shits his pants when he runs into Michael. Yeah. And then Michael uh, kind of stalks Tommy down Which the street. Michael showing uncharacteristic restraint by not snapping that bully's neck. <laughs> uh, Doctor Loomis is at the uh, is at a phone booth along the highway, trying to get a hold of the authorities in Haddonfield. And no one cares. To, yep, to alert them that uh, Michael is coming. And I think that's when they find the ditch car, right? And yep, they find the 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 wrecker. Yeah, and then they yeah, that's where he got his uniform that he's in. Yep, and so he, we we yeah, we find his uh his discarded hospital gown, and and then we see the I don't know is does Doctor Loomis see the guy? I don't think he sees the guy. He just sees the discarded clothes, and then we're then that's where we're like, oh, so that's where he got the boots and mechanics jumpsuit. Yeah, and it pans out, and we see the dead body of the man yeah. Michael murdered and took yeah. the clothes of. I, I don't think he finds him. Uh, Lori is walking home with Linda and Annie uh, as Michael drives by later. Uh, we get one of the iconic scenes uh, where Lori and, and I think it's Annie yeah. are walking down the street and Michael steps out from behind the hedge mm-hmm. and then like disappears again. Which uh, she recognized him as the driver of the car too. Yep. And uh, Lori arrives home, and and in another iconic scene, she sees Michael uh, out her bedroom window, Mm -hmm. standing by the laundry. And then, of course, when she looks back, he's gone. Yep. And uh, then she gets a phone call, and uh, it's it's Annie, it turns out. But I think uh, a scene that kind of I went, okay, yeah, there's the little sprinklings of Black Christmas here throughout. Uh, Lori thinks she's getting like an obscene phone call. Yeah. And then it's, oh no, it was just Annie. And so I, I, when I, when I, when I watched that kind of knowing what I know about Black Christmas and, you know, and like I said, that rumor earlier on, like I went, oh, maybe there's, maybe there's a little something to that. Yeah. I remember you commenting on that while we were watching it. Uh, Dr. Loomis arrives at the cemetery to find Judith Myers' headstone missing. Yes. It's been desecrated, you know, like the kids usually do, according to the groundskeeper. <laughs> Damn kids. Probably just some kids playing a prank, you know, or kids going to steal a tombstone. Oh, that, that, you know, Jeff, there's nothing more than I love. Um, I used to love that on Halloween night getting drunk and going and stealing tombstones from the oh, local yeah. cemetery. Well, you know, I love to steal specific tombstones of my loved ones, even though, you know, they're incredibly hard to lift because they're like probably 300 pounds of solid stone, but whatever. Uh, Lori and Annie are driving around smoking pot while Don't Fear the Reaper plays classic as michael follows them uh they encounter annie's father the sheriff outside the hardware store which then they're nervous about smoking pot (laughs) yep where uh reportedly a halloween mask some rope and a knife have been stolen that's not ominous uh dr loomis then shows up uh to talk to the sheriff and had he been looking the other way he would have seen michael driving by in his stolen car yep and it's like missed him by that much Yeah, another another just great little attention to things that like you know, I'm going to, I'm going to gush about this, I think all the time, but like watching this again and like actually like focusing on the movie. Cause I, I would, I would watch this, you know, on an AMC, like around Halloween time originally. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things that like, you know, it's, it's on and I'm maybe doing something else that I'm not fully, you know, I'm getting, not giving it my full attention. No. This one, Noble, stop, <laughs> stop itching. Noble. He's so itchy. Noble, stop. But one of the, that's one of the things I love about John Carpenter so much is you can rewatch his movies and pretty much find something new every time, like mm. some new detail you missed the last time. But yeah, it's just it's one of those things where like I'm sure some people are listening to us like how'd you miss that? But it's like it's just one of those things that like when you're not paying it when you when you've seen a movie so many times mm-hmm. and you're not fully paying attention, background. yeah, you don't always notice these things. Yeah. Michael watches and fo- they follows them in the car, watches Annie arrive at Lindsay's house, who she's going to babysit that night. While her dad and Do- while Annie's dad and Doctor Lewis arrive at the Myers house, 
Uh, Dr. Loomis gives us the backstory of Michael and how, you know, he's been watching him all these years. He's pure evil. Yes. Pure evil. He needs to be destroyed. And uh, apparently the sheriff's just not taking him seriously. No one in the town seems to be that worried about this. Yeah. While Lori and Annie engage in small talk over the phone, uh, Tommy spots the boogeyman outside of Lindsay's house. Oh no, not the boogeyman. Because he's so scared of the boogeyman because those bullies earlier in the movie were teasing him about him. Uh, Lori promises Tommy that she won't let the boogeyman get him. uh, And quote, roughly, I won't let anything happen to you tonight. And strangely, uh, Lori will keep that promise. Yes, even though it's going to cost her. Yep. Um, And I think that's the scene where... Uh, Annie is talking to Lori and, and the dog's barking. Maybe maybe Annie's talking to Paul, her boyfriend. Yes, and she's like, yeah, stupid dog won't shut up. And then Michael murders the dog. Yeah. Uh, and then she's, I think she's like, ah, finally quiet. <laughs> Annie spills a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, what popcorn grease, popcorn butter. Something, yeah. On, on her clothes, so she goes out to wash them. And then uh, Michael kind of traps her in the, the outside laundry room. Yeah. And she gets stuck in the window, and nowadays that would be the beginning of a porn film. Definitely. Help, um, step bro. Annie leaves uh, Lindsay with Lori while she goes to pick up her boyfriend, Paul. Um, she goes up, realizes she doesn't have the keys, goes back to find the keys, opens the door without unlocking the car, which is a great another great little thing that I noticed this time around. Yeah. Uh, finds condensation on the inside of the... On the inside of the windshield, goes to wipe it away, and Michael strangles her from the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tommy sees Michael carrying Annie's uh, body into Lindsay's house. Uh, Dr. Loomis scares some kids away from the Myers house and then gets spooked by the sheriff. Yeah. It's a uh, double spook. One of those one of those famous double spooks. <laughs> Bob and Linda arrive at Lindsay's house, uh, planning to hook up after they complete the act. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, you know Bob. Everybody knows Bob. Oh, classic Bob. Uh, Bob goes downstairs to get uh, a couple beers, and he he gets killed by Michael. Yeah. Do they actually have sex? Yeah, they, they do because he's like, "I'll be back" or whatever. So yeah. You know, uh, and there's a scene. So so while they're while they're doing it, you all, you also see Michael's shadow walk yeah. across the. Because so he says something like, "Don't get dressed" or something like yeah. that, and it's like again, this man took like what two minutes maybe. <laughs> um. In a in another iconic look, uh, Michael appears wearing Bob's glasses and a ghost sheet. Yeah. Uh, on I think I think that that image is is my over one of my overriding images of the movie. Like yeah. one of the things I thought about like after watching like Halloween, like I said for years, mm-hmm. like I would always think about that creepy ghost scene. Yeah. Well, yeah, because at first she's you know joking around, thinking it's Bob, and then. You can kind of see the transition on her face as she realizes something is wrong. And, and she calls, she calls, uh, Linda, Linda calls Lori. Lori thinks it's Annie. Mm, thinks it's another prank. Yep. And, and you know, I, I, oh, I heard you eating earlier. Now I have to listen to you moaning while, uh, Linda gets strangled with the phone cord by Michael. Yep. Uh, Dr. Loomis now notices the missing car on the street mm. and they start going to check on things. And Lori goes to check on Annie uh, Lori finds Annie's body posed in front of Judith Myers' headstone uh, before finding the bodies of Bob and Linda. Yeah. Uh, we then get probably my favorite shot of the entire movie, that scene where Lori's standing in front of like the shadowed room and then you just see Michael's mask first appear in the in the shadow behind mm-hmm. her. Absolute yeah, favorite scene of great. that entire movie. Uh, the lighting in that scene mm-hmm. is just fantastic. Michael attacks her. Lori falls down the stairs. Uh, she's able to get out. You know, she runs. runs across the street. She's banging on the door of the house to make him up, and he's like, you know, taking his sweet ass time. <laughs> I think I think I have the quote. Hold on here. Give me give me one second. Oh man, it's like, Lori's like Tommy, open up, it's me, and Tommy, uh, she you know she's panicked. Tommy, open up, it's me, and Tommy, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, just kind of wandering <laughs> over to the door. Michael, uh, Lori gets into the house, then she realizes all the, you know, there's an open window. Mm-hmm. Michael jumps out to attack her. She stabs him with a knitting needle. Uh, she, you know, she keeps coming. Lori uh, hides in a closet, tells the kids to hide, stabs mm-hmm. Michael in the eye with a unwrapped wire hanger. And yeah. then Michael's knife. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, she tells the kids to go get help. And... Then, you know, once again, another iconic scene yeah. <laughs> where Lori's sit, you know, sitting in the foreground and we see Michael sit up in the background. Mm-hmm. It's like establishing a long precedent for these movies that he's basically unkillable. Yeah. 
oh man just what uh, like you said earlier the whole movie's iconic like mm-hmm. like I, I keep i keep feeling like i'm like iconic scene iconic scene but yeah like you said the whole movie's iconic all these moments are great uh michael attacks Lori again dr loomis is alerted by the children that that all the you know that yes. about Obviously, what's happening he can tell something is absolutely wrong draws his gun that he's been carrying to kill michael yep fires six shots into michael michael falls over the balcony uh says Lori says something like it was the boogeyman and dr loomis says as a matter of fact, it was, and then he looks down Michael is gone. to where Michael had, fall, yeah, had fallen, and he's gone, and we get the great... Cue the amazing theme. Yeah, we get the theme, we get Michael's heavy breathing, and we get all and the shots of the movie. pans around the whole neighborhood. And and that's how and the movie like, ends. And it's like the perfect ending to a movie like this. It's like he's still out there, and he could be anywhere. Yep. <sighs> he could even be in your neighborhood. What a just what a great fucking movie. It's just, and this is exactly why people say that John Carpenter is a master director. Like, yeah, they, there's there are so I mean, we'll get into it. We'll 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 talk we'll talk about everything, you know, here in a little bit. But let's let's kind of do our minutia segment. Uh where do you want to kick us off? Hmm. Well, I mean, um, let's address the elephant in the room that I'm sure everybody already knows, but the Michael Myers quote unquote mask is just a William Shatner mask. <laughs> Right, yeah. Let's do uh, let's do Christmas sweater or yeah. I, Halloween sweater. Halloween sweater. I, iconic looks. Iconic. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think we've also kind of done that as a catch all for like different yeah. things in the scenes. I mean, yeah, it's like costuming and just you know set decoration. Anything you want to talk about? Uh, Lori's uh, blue button down shirt and bell bottoms. That's a great look. Yeah. No, it's like. It's, when you think of teenagers getting killed in a slasher movie, you think of people dressed like the kids are in this movie. Uh, do, uh, Dr. Loomis's trench coat. Yes. He looks, they pull a really good job of costuming him because he looks like, you know, a professional, yet he also looks like he's unhinged. It could go off into a crazy rant at any moment. Um, oh, uh, one thing I noticed, I, maybe I called it out to you. There is a, Annie is making a, uh, some Jolly Time popcorn. Yes. Uh, Jolly Time popcorn from right here in, 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 well, not right here. We're in Des Moines, but, but in Sioux City, in, Iowa. Yes, in Iowa. Home of my alma mater, Morningside College. Go Mustangs. Uh, <laughs> our classic, our classic <laughs> battle cry. <laughs> I mean, let's just go over Michael's look. Obviously the William Shatner mask, iconic, cool. I mean, it didn't take much to make it scary. Let's be honest, Bill. <laughs> what did I, I? I think I heard somewhere that they had almost gotten a Tom Selleck mask. Yes, that was the that was the original thought. But I think, if I remember right, in the special features of the DVD copy I had, John Carpenter said that when he saw the Shatner mask, he's like, "This will be perfect." But yeah, they, <laughs> imagine how how different would would these movies be if it was I mean, if it was a Tom Selleck mask if, stalking yeah, if these teenagers was getting around. murdered by Magnum PI. <laughs> what a what a wild movie that would be. Yeah, I mean, we need a re-edit, basically. Is what oh, you're what a, yeah, what a great uh, uh, but, Michael's look is iconic. But and, his his mask. I mean, the mechanics jumpsuit boot combo. I mean, you wouldn't think that would be scary since that's something you see practically every day. But, I mean, honestly, it works really well as a horror movie costume. A, a weird thing my wife noticed um, on our on our watch through where I was taking my notes. She said, she's like, he's really thin. Like, he's really, like, why? Like, like she's like, in my mind, he's, like, massive and big. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, he's kind of a string bean. He's a, yeah. li- he's a he's little, not... he's a little thinner than you, than you think he is. Yeah, he's really not, like, any kind of bulkier, like... He's not really an intimidating figure without his, like, if he didn't have his costume, he really would just, like, be some guy in the crowd, Mm -hmm. which I think is one of the things that makes him a scarier slasher to me than, like, Jason or even in the Rob Zombie Halloween movies where they turned him into a brick shit house like Jason. Right. It's like, yeah, that, I mean, you see that guy coming from a mile away. The Michael Myers in this movie is, like, just any guy you could be passing on the street. No, I, I I agree. It's fantastic. Every, everything they did in the you know for that for that was 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 a stroke of genius. Yeah, I mean honestly, because it's it's just it is more immersive and more believable that it would be like a, I mean serial killers when you see them very rarely are they like some giant muscle bound maniac. Mm-hmm. It's like usually there's some guy you would never look twice at. No, absolutely. Uh, you want to get into to favorite quotes, Christmas carols, Halloween Halloween what trick or treat jokes. <laughs> Yes, our favorite trick or treat jokes of the movie. You can go first. I got to pull mine up. All right. Um, there's the when when the kids are going and uh, to the Myers house and uh, Doctor Lewis scares them away. <laughs> Doctor Lewis says, "Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there." 
<laughs> that is really funny. There's not, you know, there aren't a ton of like great jokes. Um, I mean, it, not really. Or great, or, or like, like great lines, lines that like made us laugh. I mean, not a lot of funny quotes, but as far as like standout quotes go, the uh, speech, little like mini speech Loomis gives about meeting Michael Myers, mm-hmm. I've always liked. And thought really fit well into like the whole making him seem like some kind of supernatural killer almost. Uh, I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil, right or wrong. And uh, he kind of, he does these ominous one-liners to pretty much everybody he meets. And the my favorite one was when he uh, meets the sheriff and he's... He's like, oh, you know, what? what is this deal with this Michael guy? And he's like, Sheriff, death has come to your town. Yeah, that, is, that is a great line. <laughs> when Lori when Lori sees that, that, that scene I mentioned where Lori sees Michael behind the hedge, um, she, Lori says something to Annie. She's like, you guys think I'm too smart. And Annie says, I don't. I don't. I think you're wacko. Now you're seeing men behind bushes. <laughs> uh, when, when, Dr. Lew- when Dr. Lewis arrives at the cemetery, the groundskeeper says something like, why do they do it? Goddamn kids, they'll do anything for Halloween. <laughs> exactly. Fucking kids. And then, of course, the, the, the line that I mentioned earlier, Lori, Lori said, Tommy, open up, it's me, Tommy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. What was it? Uh... Oh, yeah, it's uh, when he's talking to Michael, I think, in the house, he's like, you fooled them, Michael, but you haven't fooled me. <laughs> You like recognizing the fact that he's pure evil. Our Christmas spirit. Uh, how Christmassy is the movie? How Christmassy are the kills? I guess how Halloween is Halloweeny is the movie? How Halloweeny are the kills? Oh, these kills are very Christmassy. Um, I you know truly. Uh, I mean, honestly, for a movie called Halloween, the kills are not all that Halloweeny. I would say. I agree. Uh, the. Uh, it, you know, it takes place at Halloween. You get you get some iconic imagery, but but it's it's kind of on the edges. It's kind of on the on the yeah. outside of the movie looking in. I mean, you get the pumpkins, you get the kids in costumes, you get the candy, you get the uh, late night creature features. Which, uh, funnily enough, uh, one of the movies you see on TV is The Thing, which John Carpenter would later go on to remake. Yep, they go and they pump they they carve pumpkins. Uh, Tommy Doyle's bringing a pumpkin home from school before mm. the kids make him drop it. You can see Halloween decorations and stuff up. Although we both commented on the continuity error that if this was really shot in Illinois around Halloween time, that none of the trees would be green. I was gonna say let's uh we we you and I discussed a new category. Uh, we're gonna call it uh, broken bulb, brilliant bulb. Uh, it, it's I think it's felt like too often in these episodes we you know only talk about the bad things and the bad movies and only talk about the good things and the good movies so let's let's kind of talk about one of each one of you know a, a bad thing a, a thing that we didn't like in the movie and a thing we did like in the movie and, and my my broken bulb um is that for halloween time in illinois it's awfully green mm-hmm. yeah i mean that really sticks out like a sore thumb to somebody from the midwest because yeah, in October, I mean, even before Halloween, the trees are going to be mostly turned. But I mean, definitely by Halloween time, you're not going to be seeing any green leaves. No, exactly. That was that was that's kind of the only thing I've uh, I've thought about. Uh, the the only the only real complaint, um, just that the movie's a little a little greener than it should be. Um, the only thing, I mean, that was my main complaint as well. But, I mean, the only other thing I'm really thinking for Broken Bulb on this one is the kills are kind of constrained by the time period. Because if you wanted to get an R rating in the 70s, you had to be a lot more restrained than you would be today. So I think some of the kills probably could have benefited from this movie being shot later on. But, I mean, that's really not the movie's fault. And, I mean, John Carpenter does a really good job making the kills feel impactful without showing a ton of blood. So... I mean, overall, it still really works, but I think you can kind of feel like they had to hold back some of the more brutal stuff that they wanted to do just to get by the censors. Right. Uh, brilliant, brilliant bulb. Uh, what What's the thing you kind of liked most, or your, or your biggest takeaway? Uh, brilliant bulb on this movie for me has and will always be the soundtrack. It's just it's iconic. I listen to it even when I'm not watching the movie. It adds so much like ambiance to the movie. 
that it just it makes the whole thing for me it's honestly the soundtrack more than anything else is what makes michael myers scary to me that uh that's a good one i hadn't even i hadn't that one hadn't even crossed my mind my uh my brilliant bulb is uh is is the thing that that we kind of mentioned like a thing i hadn't noticed originally uh the continuity the yeah. uh scene to scene the things that I didn't notice, you know, that, that I didn't notice the first time around how, you know, I, I never noticed the line where Dr. Lewis is like, Oh, someone must've taught him how to drive. Yeah. Like not leaving questions unanswered. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, the, uh, Annie, you know, going to open the door, the door to the car, the door is locked. She goes back into the house, gets the keys. The door is suddenly unlocked and Michael's inside. Mm -hmm. I, I, just those little things. I, I, I absolutely, things that I didn't pay attention to the first time that I just absolutely love. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think this is pretty much as close to a perfect movie as you're going to get. I, I agree. This is, this is you know, it, it, like we said, it, like, like, it certainly like you said, it's iconic. It's an iconic yeah. movie. It executes the slasher genre pretty much better than any other movie I've ever seen. Yep. The, uh, let's kind of get into it, our final rating. Norm, you know, for these, for these Christmas horror movies, we rate them on what are three categories. Is it seasonally scary? Is it ho 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 hilarious or is it you'll be sorry? Yeah, I mean, honestly, seasonally scary does apply to all, pretty much any movie. So we were thinking ahead on that one. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, seasonally scary for me. Um, yeah. You just kind of want to talk about your thoughts on you know not just Halloween, not just this Halloween nineteen seventy eight, but kind of the whole franchise because that's what I was kind of going to do. I mean, yeah, I'll go ahead. You want to go first or me? Oh, uh, sure, I can. I can go first. Um, and this movie, I, and I think, like you said, this, this movie's close to perfect. I mean, I would put it up there with, like, Alien. I would put it up there with, uh, I, for me, you know, my favorite movie is Black Christmas. Um, I would, you know, I'd put it up there right right with Black Christmas. It's it's so much fun. It's very scary. Uh, the franchise as a whole, uh, there's some dips. Um, I, I, like, I like Season of the Witch. I like Halloween 3, but I know some people don't. Um, also, one probably the Halloween movie I've seen the most over the years is uh, Halloween Six: The Curse of Michael Myers uh, with Paul Rudd. One, yeah, uh, that one's <laughs> strangely one of my favorites. Not just because Paul Rudd's in it. I saw it a lot. I think it was on on Showtime or, or Stars or something a lot, or maybe Encore when I was younger. And I watched that movie a lot and just had a, had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I know I know a lot of, a lot of people don't like it, but it. Certainly, it kind of also ties into Halloween Three. It kind of does a weird thing where it brings back that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I we I think we both uh, have watched Halloween Ends by this point. Um, I, you know, I've not seen the Rob Zombie movies, or I've seen little bits of them, so I can't really comment on those. Certainly, the new ones, I, I, I've I liked all three of them well enough. Um, I, as I said to you off the air, I was kind of curious how we got there from here. I was kind of curious, you know, how did we go from you know we're we're gonna reboot the Halloween franchise, reboot the timeline, make make Michael, you know, less supernatural, and then somehow wind up making him more supernatural in the process. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll jump in with my thoughts on the new trilogy. One, it doesn't really feel like a trilogy now that it's completed. I mean, the first one set it up because we were talking about this before. It's like so Michael Myers is not a supernatural entity; he's just a man, and he's coming back to kill Laurie. And then uh, he basically, at the end, he gets trapped in the burning basement. But, of course, he's not dead because it's a Halloween movie. And then so Halloween Kills feels like the end of the franchise because they're, the whole evil dies tonight. We're going to get rid of this Michael Myers once and for all. The whole town's going to unite and destroy him. And then at the end, they're like, oh, well, actually, we can't destroy him. <laughs> and we're leaving this open for another movie. And then they did Halloween Ends. And they build it as this, it's going to be the final chapter. This is it. Michael Myers, the Michael Mar Myers versus Laurie Stroud thing, it's going to be over after this. It's one final showdown. And then he's barely in it. <laughs> he's like, he's a side character. He's like the catalyst for this new killer to become like the new Michael Myers, which we talked about as an idea that they played with in the franchise before. And I think you said four and five were the ones I was thinking of, mm -hmm. the little girl kind of taking on the mantle and Dr. Loomis being like, oh, God, it's spread. It's happening again. And it's just like the new franchise feels so uneven to me now because of the last movie. It's like the first two feel like 
Halloween movies, the third one feels... Honestly, the third one kind of pulled a season of The Witch on us. <laughs> it pulled another Halloween 3 on us. I've heard I've heard a lot of people say that. Um, Which, I again, I like Season of the Witch. It's a good movie. But, I mean, as far as an entry in the Halloween franchise, it doesn't really feel like it belongs. Because I know the original intent, uh, John Carpenter's original intent for the franchise, when they asked him to make it a franchise, was to have it not be Michael Myers every time. Right. The the one thing, you know, we we mentioned multiple times, I, I know I mentioned multiple times, iconic scenes, iconic moments. In the new movie, in the 2018 one, I think about that scene with the motion light mm. and, and Michael in the background killing killing that one kid. I think about that scene a lot. Well, and they just, they played a lot with the whole, they were mirroring kind of Lori being transformed after all these years or whatever. She's kind of become like Michael. She's like turned herself into a predator and a killer in anticipation of him coming back for her. And they parallel a lot of the iconic Michael shots from the first movie, but replace Lori in the shots. Like we were talking about the one where she's looking in through the window of the school. Mm. And it's like, oh, so basically they're trying to hint that's like she's become so tainted by Michael Myers' evil influence on her life that she's become like a hardened killer, which I thought was an interesting idea to explore. And then. In Halloween Kills, she's basically laid up in the hospital the entire time, so we don't really see any character development from her. Right. Which I thought was kind of a weird choice. And then, yeah, in Halloween Ends, it's like, okay, so we're doing this. What's his name? Is it Cal Cunningham? Uh, uh, Derek, I think, is the character name. I don't remember the actor's no. name. No, uh, his, he's got an alliterative name. Oh, does he? It's something cunning. Oh, okay, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe it was. I, I swear yes. it was Derek, but I... They did I, another alliterative name, like Michael Myers. He's something Cunningham. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I knew what they were going for at the beginning. It's like, oh, he works in the junkyard in the mechanic's jumpsuit. And, you know, he's getting bullied. And, you know, you're showing this... I mean, at the beginning, he killed somebody. I mean, not by on purpose, like Michael did, by accident. Mm -hmm. But the town basically blames him as if he killed the kid on purpose. Right, no, exactly. And the, <laughs> the weird murder hobo that's apparently been feeding Michael Myers people at random intervals. Yeah, that was I that, that was, was a strange choice. That was an interesting thing. Uh, Michael Myers apparently loses his powers if he doesn't kill enough people. And then will slowly gain them back if he gets people to murder again, I guess. <laughs> and then uh, the entire movie is basically set up to have him be like, you know... Oh, this is going to be the new Michael Myers. And then, yeah, he just randomly gets murdered at the end of the movie by Laurie. And then Michael shows back up and they have their final showdown, which feels like completely cut out of a different movie and I, pasted on the end of this one. I think, yeah, I think he said off the air, it felt like two different movies. And I think does. that's very true. It's like two movies sandwiched together, basically. It's the end of this Halloween trilogy and the beginning of a new one. It's like they honestly, Halloween ends should have been the final story between Michael and Laurie. And then uh, they should have made Halloween Begins or something with this new story with this kid in it. Oh, that, that would have been an interesting take. I like yeah. that idea. Sorry about that. If uh, any technical audio issues happened there, we had a, we had a slight malfunction in our software. Uh, but we should be back up recording. If uh, the last section sounded a little weird, uh, that was just because of an audio glitch. But we hope to have it fixed for the rest of the episode. Um, we just finished our uh final rating uh so uh, jeff how do you want to how do you want to handle our last category how do you want to handle the naughty list for this week mm, interesting choice well i mean michael's gonna have to be if we put him on the naughty list he's gonna end up being pretty high right no i i agree i i uh, it's it's kind of a weird thing like do do we do we put this character who's you know the naughty list is kind of you know we've danced around the idea this is a this is a Halloween episode of our yeah. Christmas horror movie podcast. How do we handle a a non Christmas themed killer in any way? Um, and and you know and and you've you've kind of had your ideas. Do it. Do we make a temporary uh, trick or treat list and mm. and we put him at the top of the trick list? <laughs> you know, honestly, I think we should probably just rank him on the naughty list. Just with the caveat that he's not a, a Christmas horror movie killer. I mean, if we're if we're taking the whole if we're taking the whole Michael Myers oeuvre, if we're taking everything. Yeah. Um. Oh, also, I forgot to make a joke. Oh, he's a regular Jason Myers. 
from uh, Thirteen Slays. Oh my god! Uh, it, but if we're if we're taking all of all of the Halloween franchise into account here, yeah. Um, I mean, he's 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 probably right below the literal apocalypse. I don't know. I if mean, he's... yeah. I mean, with his power level being basically unkillable, having superhuman strength, seemingly the ability to just appear in front of somebody <laughs> if he feels like it. Yeah, I mean, I think the apocalypse would be the only thing stronger than Michael Myers. Yeah, so we'll we'll put him <laughs> we'll put him right up there. Uh, probably for later episodes, we won't really mention him. Um, I mean, we can mention him if he's relevant. But I mean, honestly, most of the killers we put on the list so far don't stack up to any kind of supernatural force. No, absolutely, I I agree. So yeah, we'll 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 put him up there, kind of uh, tentatively. We'll say he's an honorable mention on the knock. That's that's a good way to handle it. Uh, so for our last section, we like to do a little segment that we call Garbage Day. Huh? No. <laughs> and if you would like to send us an email when we clean out our email inbox uh, to our Garbage Day send- segment, send us an email at horrorfortheholidays at gmail dot com. Our email this week comes from Josh, and it says, Jeff and Jay, you asked on Twitter for Halloween-related questions. What do you like to do for Halloween, and how do you like to celebrate the Halloween season? Thanks, Josh. Mm. Um, well, kind of, you know, I I was thinking about this. Um I kind of treat Halloween kind of like how I treat Christmas. I like to drive around and look at how people have decorated their houses for Halloween. I mean, certainly I I like to watch scary movies, but I watch scary movies all year round. Yeah. Uh, We both do. Um, You know, get lots of candy. Uh, You know, certainly try Halloween-related food snacks, different things that have come out, uh, as we did on the Slate episode where we kind of reviewed stuff. And I know uh, we've actually got another one of those here right now. Oh, yes. What sights I have to show you. Um, we're here in a second. We're going to we're gonna get a little bonus uh, garbage day, and we're going to sample the ghost pepper Whopper from <laughs> Burger King. Uh, but this year... You thought the normal Whopper was bad. Wait till you taste the spicy version. When uh, this year, uh, certainly we went, uh, my wife and, and, and I and, and our kids went and got a... Uh, the Halloween buckets from McDonald's. We got nice. we, I, we weren't able to get the pumpkin, but we at least got the boo and the uh, witch. No lids this year, I heard. Yeah, it, it but it's kind of a neat homage to it. Also, the I think the I think the buckets are a little smaller, mm-hmm. but it's not a big deal. They still look really cool, and it it does hit that nostalgia portion of your brain. Cool. Uh, but I thought I thought they were pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just you know, drive around listening to to spooky sounds um, on the Sirius Sirius XM channel one hundred and four. Or we've got a Pandora station. Um, also, I think uh, Dinosaur Dracula on Twitter has a, a Halloween playlist. You know, listen to that. Yeah, and you know, drive around and look at look at the houses that have decorated for Halloween. So some people have really stepped it up. So there's some really cool houses here in the Des Moines area. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we we kind of plan out our, our month of October uh, with different Halloween-related things. We're Tomorrow we're going to go drive around, uh, or we're going to go drive around and go to a couple houses, and we're also going to go ride the Boone Railroad, and uh, there's going to be an Adams Family event on that. So that'll be, that'll be kind of fun. Uh, usually what I do is I watch a couple of Halloween-themed horror movies, because, I mean, I watch horror movies year-round, too, but I usually try to save some Halloween-themed ones for October. Uh, sometimes I'll do like a creature feature marathon, which kind of hits my nostalgia of watching uh, Godzilla marathons on the Sci Fi Channel during October. I like watching uh, the Cinemassacre reviews. Have you ever seen them? Uh, I've not seen those. <coughs> oh, I'm dying. Hold on. <laughs> we haven't even opened these uh, Ghost Piper Whoppers yet. But uh, he's, uh, what's his name? James Rolfe, I think. Okay. You might know him from his uh, video game channel, but his videos are pretty cool. He always does a Cinemassacre, a video at least a couple times a year, Just, but he usually tries to focus them in Halloween. He used to do, back before he became you know a father and busy with all that kind of stuff, he used to do one video every day during Halloween. Oh, very cool. And that was always cool to watch. Um, 
I'm going Flix Brewhouse is showing the original Dracula with Bella Lugosi. Oh, very cool. Halloween night. So I'm going to be going to that with some uh, my sister and her boyfriend and my brother and his girlfriend. So, I mean, that's pretty much what I do every year. I try to watch a couple of Halloween scary movies. I like looking at decorations and stuff, too. I usually check them out in my neighborhood and mm. stuff. Uh, I'm up in Ankeny, and uh, there's a there's a couple houses that do kind of moving displays, and there's also one in Madrid, so those are fun. Mm-hmm. They they also do stuff for Christmas, so that's kind of how I know about them. Yeah, but the, those are fun things, and yeah, it's it's just uh, you know, don't I'm not a big you know I I like going to a, to a haunted house, but ever since I've had kids, it's a little harder to sneak away. Um, yeah, but you know, used to like doing that back when I was younger, um, had fewer responsibilities. Uh, but yeah, you know, just I, I think kind of the same way I, everyone likes to celebrate Halloween. Um, but you know, also back in the day, you know, I would I would turn on AMC and and watch Halloween, yeah. you know, the Halloween marathon that they had there. Kind of like back in the day when they used on Friday the Thirteenth, they would show all the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Yeah, you know, I was. What's the one? Which Friday the Thirteenth is Jason versus Carrie? Oh, I don't remember. I'm not. It's, it's either six or seven. I'm not sure. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not overly familiar with them. But I like that one. It's fun. Uh, so yeah, do we want to do we want to open up these uh this ghost pepper whopper and I suppose give a live food review. Oh boy, a little ASMR for you. Oh god, you know this Burger King bag just lets you know what you're in for. Tasteless brown. <laughs> it's so small. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about that real quick? What the hell ever happened to the Whopper? The Whopper used to be a sandwich you could respect. Now it's like you know, basically a double cheeseburger. You know, my my fate. Uh, my favorite when I think back to it, my favorite thing at Burger King was the uh, chicken tenders. Oh boy! It's an orange bun. We've got a neon orange bun and black sesame seeds. Oh man, and it looks very Halloweeny. Ooh, we got a sad piece of microwave bacon hanging out the side. Here we go. Cutting it, cutting it, almost through. Oh, yeah, there's his crispy jalapenos. All right, let's give it a shot here. Okay. Honestly? All right, it's not terrible. Is it supposed to be spicy? I don't know. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of heat, but it's not bad. I'm gonna, I am going to unscrew this lid of milk so I can get a... Get a more clear throated <laughs> discussion. I mean, in comparison to a regular Whopper, it's pretty good. The Whopper. I mean, talk about not only a sandwich, but a restaurant that has gone so downhill since I was a kid. The the last thing from Burger King I, I recall really, really liking, uh, besides the tacos, I thought those were kind of fun. Um they did the the chicken king or the big the chicken big king or something yeah. like that. I liked I liked that quite a bit. But yeah, most of the Bur- Burger King used to be my favorite fast food restaurant when I was younger. But the quality has dropped. But but I, this isn't bad. I would I wouldn't be opposed to them having this year round. Yeah, I mean honestly, if they just came out with the spicy Whopper, I'd like it. It's pretty good. Mm. No, I think it's a fun. It's a fun little Halloween edition. It's not a. It's not as good as. I mean, it's not as fun as that that nostalgia hit for the uh, for the McDonald's buckets. Yeah, but it, it it was it was fun. It was a it was a fun little thing, and, and, and you know, certainly glad we tried it. I mean, the pumpkin buns, you know, it's cool. Um, honestly, the Whopper is one of those sandwiches that has like a diminishing return. Like you think, oh, a Whopper is pretty good. Why not? You get a double Whopper. No, if you expose yourself to too much Whopper meat at once, <laughs> the taste drastically goes downhill. And if you're an animal like me, I used to go in high school, we'd drive through the Burger King that was right down the street from East High School, and I would get a triple Whopper. <laughs> I remember the, the one I always think about is the Angry Whopper. It came, uh, out, it came out, you know, when I, uh, I was living up in Sioux City at the time, and I just remember thinking, like, what, regardless of how this tastes, I'm sure it's going to make, you know, my stomach feel angry here in like an yeah. hour. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll see with this one. But yeah, I I didn't think it was terrible. I you know if we if we put it with the rest of the of the stu- the food that we reviewed earlier this month, or I guess last month, um, yeah. it's a solid middle of the pack. Yeah, I, I you know I don't know exactly where I'd put it, but yeah, it's 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 fine. But it, it it's not terrible. 
I wouldn't throw it in the trash, but I also probably won't get another one. No, absolutely not. Um, and that wraps up uh, our Halloween special for this year. Um, what a special it was. Our all horror for the Hallows Day Eve. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with us, uh, send us an email at horrorfortheholidays at gmail.com. Uh, we can be rich, reached on. <laughs> we can be rich. <laughs> we, rich. I wish we could be rich. <laughs> we can be reached on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok uh, at horror the number four holidays. I mean, if you want to follow us for audio backups on YouTube, or if you just like watching and listening to the show on YouTube, go ahead and do that. Yeah. Or for the holidays at youtube.com. We've got uh, our TikTok, which we make videos on occasionally. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, if you're a uh, indie, or even not indie, if you're if you're a professional uh, Christmas horror content producer either movie or book or comic book or uh, game anything you want yeah anything podcast uh reach out to us and uh we'd love to promote your thing uh if we can help you you know fund on kickstarter or indiegogo anything like that give us a give us a heads up on one of our accounts we'd love to shout you out we're always we're always you know looking to get more of this content made and we're also spending our own money and and backing yeah. these things so it's it's always fun yeah, um, I mean, and we want to see more of it. I mean, if we ever recommend anything on this show, it's going to be something that we're actually interested in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you again in two weeks. Have a spooktacular Hallow's Eve. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Bye.